Hi everyone, so in this video we will be trying to communicate DHT11 temperature sensor data uh, from one Arduino to another Arduino over CAN communication and we will be also trying to capture the CAN frames using a logic analyzer and try to understand how the frames and all works. So let's start with the hardware connections before we go into the code part. The hardware setup for the communication between two Arduino nodes using CAN communication. So on the right you can see one CAN node which basically has is an Arduino Uno and on top of it you will find the CAN shield and I have installed a DST11 sensor so as to get temperature and humidity value. So the data from this sensor is taken up by the Arduino Uno and transmitted through CAN. So there is a CAN DB9 connector so I have uh, made a custom cable just for the TX RX uh, for a CAN high, CAN low and the ground. So this is connected to the second CAN node which is again the same replica itself that is a Arduino Uno, a CAN shield and just to display the data I have a OLED display. So uh, on additionally you can see this particular device which is basically a logic analyzer. So using this we can kind of see what the data is being transmitted over the CAN bus. So I have taken the connection from CAN low and this is the ground. So you will be able to see what is the data being communicated over the CAN line. For the software part I have used uh, the Arduino CAN library by Sandeep Mistri and I find this one to be one of the most comprehensive libraries out there for CAN. So here uh, I am basically showing the git page for the same and you can see uh, there is a api dot markdown so if you want to know how the particular functions are to be used better go and check this particular page it gives you a clear detailed instructions on how to use each of the functions available in that particular library and also you will find uh, a set of examples provided in the same library also which will help you to basically set up uh, initial level of communication between the two CAN nodes. So let's move on to the uh, transmission code. So I have already installed that particular library from my library manager and I have already added the DST11 library also. So uh, uh, basic set of instructions is to define which pin is connected to the uh, DST9 to the Arduino and uh, another information that you need is basically at what baud rate you are going to set up the CAN communication window. So here those initial setups are done then then in the void setup what I have done is I have uh, created a serial object just for the debug prints then called on the DHT begin now as for CAN communication setup I have used 500 kilobits per second so this is for making sure the CAN communication is up properly and all. Now in the void loop what we do is for every one second we get the temperature and humidity value and I have added a debug print just to check. Then uh, one thing that you have to know about CAN is a maximum of 8 bytes can be transmitted as payload in one frame. So we have uh, basically two things one is the humidity and another is the temperature right so what i have done is i have created a uh, array which can contain up to eight bytes and in that eight bytes what i have done is i have uh, used <coughs> the first four spaces first four bytes to save the data of temperature then that location plus four that is the first location plus fourth location onwards I'll basically save the humidity data. So after this two lines of execution, what I will have is the data array will uh, contain temperature value in the first four locations and humidity values in the last four locations. Next, each CAN message is having a specific message ID or the identifier, right? So that is what is shown as 0x12. So this is basically arbitrary for my uh, 
demonstration i have used 12 uh, if you want something else definitely that can be your choice now once i have uh, sent or mentioned that okay the i am starting a packet with an id 12 hexadecimal 12 then i use the right api to send the buffer which is my temperature and humidity data and i'll just tell how many bytes i have to transmit then after that i call the end packet method and again there are other methods that you can use if you want to send a byte by byte uh, so for that i will definitely ask you to go through that particular api.md file in the git page so once that is done your transmission part is completed and this kind of loops in for every one second so if i open this terminal you can see the humidity and temperature value getting printed so at that same time it is getting transmitted also for the receiver code what i have done is i have added the oled library also so that is bit of a confusing one if it, if you are talking new to it so i will be basically focusing on the can and the serial part only so here also i will have to work on uh, your can begin so here also i have to make sure that the baud rate that i set at the transmission node is, is as same as the one at the receiving node so here also i have initialized that 500 kbps then what i have done is i have uh, created a callback function that is whenever a can message is received received i will execute this particular function on receive so that is what i am doing in this particular line that is registering the callback for any message event that happens in the can and in the void loop uh, basically printing out the temperature <coughs> and humidity value uh, continuously like for every one second i will update with the new latest value that i get so like i told i am registering a callback event right so once a can message is received i'll basically um, uh, run this on receive function so i have on receive function uh, defined here yeah so in this on receive what i'll do first is i get the packet id that uh, is received or uh, that is of the received mess scan message and then i'll check if the id is 12 because in this demonstration i have uh, used the id 12 from the transmission node right so then i will kind of do a looping now this loop will continue to execute until all the bytes in that particular can frame is received now in order to understand how many messages or bytes are there we can use the api can dot available so this would return an integer value of information which contains information of how many bytes are remaining so i for my particular case what i have to do is i have to loop that uh, bytes from the can frame one by one up to eight times so this particular loop this for loop will do that so can dot read will basically give you the individual bytes then it keeps on reading until the whole bytes is received now after this loop what i'll have is in the buffer i'll have the information of temperature and humidity right so first four bytes will be temperature remaining four bytes will be of humidity so i use the mem copy itself to copy the uh, buffer values the first four values from the buffer to the variable temperature similarly buffer plus four would mean that i am copying the humidity value and i am saving it in this humidity variable and similarly i'm just printing it out here now we'll see how this message is received in the uh, serial monitor yeah. so you can see uh, received id is 12 then available bytes is 8 then again the value that we have seen it in the transmission side also In order to view the CAN frames being transmitted across the canvas, we have connected the logic analyzer to the circuit and uh, tapped onto the CAN block. Now we need to have a software which is called as Logic2 and it's uh, freely available from the website of this particular company, Salaya. So once you have inst 
installed this and connected the logic analyzer then we need to create a session and uh, once this session is created we just kind of click on start and automatically this frames will be captured now we'll just basically stop now i have connected the channel uh, can low onto channel one so you can see there are a few kind of fray uh, i mean signals here right so if we double click on that basically it expands and it shows us what the whole frame is all about now if we remember the code we had actually given the transmission or transmission interval between two can frames to be one second so you can see from one can frame to the another can message there is a gap of one second so if i double click on it you can see the actual data that is uh, in the code we have seen the trans uh, temperature and the humidity data being uh, clubbed into one uh, transmit buffer of 8 bytes size, right so a can frame can maximum send uh, 8 bytes so the id that i have chosen for this particular uh, demo is 12 and remaining things as per the can frame defined and you can see 8 bytes of data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and the crc and the acknowledgement value so this particular tool is helpful for understanding protocols so i always use this logic analyzer if i want to make sure the communication between devices especially protocols like i2c spi is going smoothly now I, one bonus thing about this particular tool is that you can have a lot of analyzers so you can see i2c uh, async cdl spi uh, can mode bus so all these things are easily available so uh, I'll just basically show you how to add the scan analyzer so I will just delete this first so now we have some kind of signal in channel 1 right so what I need to do is on the third tab this is the start this is your analyzers so I click on the analyzers and click on that plus sign and I will select can now I have to give details like okay on which channel I have on which channel of the uh, logic analyzer I have connected so I have connected in can 1 sorry channel 1 and the baud rate that I had set for GAN communication is 500 kilo bits per second and if it's inverted can that is GAN high you just need to click on this currently I have given for CAN low so once I do that automatically the data is now populated here okay so I can go to the table view if I click on here it will automatically go double click on it and it just kinds of expands so on top of this if i click right click you can convert it to ascii or whatever value that you want okay i'll stick with hexadecimal for the time being okay yeah hopefully that is helpful for you guys thank you for watching this video and the links for the code and the links for purchasing the can shield as well as the logic analyzer and the link for software do uh, download of this LIR everything will be given in the description and if anyone is uh, having any doubt or clarification if you want to build from this space experiment or demonstration please feel free to put it in the comments uh, I'll try to respond it as soon as possible thank you